Welcome. This is Samantha Skelly, and you are listening to the Hungry for Happiness podcast, where we dig deep and discover how to reconnect into your body, heal your relationship to food, and finally feel the liberation and freedom you desire. Kleenex is encouraged, and pants are optional. What's up, Phoenix? As you are listening to Freedom Friday with Chandler Bolt, I absolutely loved interviewing Chandler. He's he's actually a really really good friend of mine. He has this incredible company that helps people write and publish their first best selling book, and he did that exact thing for me earlier this year. A lot of you guys have been asking me about book publishing and how I did it and all that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be super valuable just to bring Chandler on the show so you can hear it from him. He is the host of the self-publishing podcast and the author of six best-selling books, including his most recent book, called Publish. He is also the founder and CEO of Self Publishing School, the number one online resource for writing your first book. Through his books, podcasts, training videos, and Self Publishing School, he's helped thousands of people on their journey to writing their first book. So for all of those of you who are listening, who you know you have a book inside of you, I am so excited for you to check out this episode. Enjoy. What's up, Phoenixes, and welcome back to the Hungry for Happiness podcast. I'm super stoked to have one of my good friends, Chandler Bolt, here to talk about something that we don't normally talk about on this show. This show is very, we talk about a lot of feelings, a lot of emotionality, a lot of things like this. However, this topic comes up a lot, mostly because I have recently gone through the process of writing a book, which you all have asked a lot of questions about. So I wanted to bring Chandler on to just kind of like open the book, no pun intended, to this conversation. And, uh, and just for, for you guys just to really see the insides of what is self-publishing and how incredibly easy it can be for you. So Chandler, thank you so much for coming on. Sam, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So the number one question we ask all of our guests is, what is the number one thing about life that makes you feel most alive? There's that feeling word again. Oh, yeah, we're going to get all into the feelings. It's going to be great. Uh, I, was te- I was teaching Chandler um, how to access his feelings last weekend, so it's a bit of an inside joke. <laughs> uh, it's, it's still a work in progress. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, the thing that for me that makes me feel most alive is um, the freedom to create something that makes other people's lives better, mm. uh, which I think uh, is what I've created in self-publishing school. And that's why, mm. you know, uh, a lot of people don't feel fulfilled uh, in their day-to-day work. And I didn't mm. either. Um, so it's kind of part mm. of my story is why I decided to drop out of school uh, mm. is because I was tired of learning how to run a business from professors who had never ran a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. that wasn't fulfilling for me. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, just the, the ability to create something that has a positive impact, not only just for mm-hmm. like, obviously the customers and the people who go through the program and think people like you, Sam, right? Where it's mm-hmm. just like, uh, mm-hmm. and I feel amazing when I see books mm-hmm. um, from our students that just like change people's lives mm-hmm. uh, and change mm-hmm. the trajectory of their lives, um, which mm-hmm. is really cool. But then also like for the employees of the business and uh, mm-hmm. you know, this with the you know, pretty fast growing business yourself. So it's just a cool feeling to be mm-hmm. able to go at the end of the day, put your head on the pillow and say, um, a lot of people's lives were better today and just in general, like because mm-hmm. I... <laughs> yeah, uh, which 100%. Is like, you know, it's, it's just such a great feeling. It's really cool. And um, I just want to share something super, super awesome. Um, so my book came out in on February 28th, which was my 28th birthday. And uh, we had our retreat in May. And um, we were kind of like going around the circle. And I was asking people like, hey, how did you find out about this book? And I think it was like over half of the people were there in person with me because they read the book. And I just think like that, that in itself is like incredible. So like the impact that you had on me for then me to do that, to then attract these people to come into like my business. It's, it's, it's incredible. And we're talking about like it in a business sense, but this is like, you could share a story of something that you went through, you know, in your life, you could put your life story on paper and then someone could buy it off Amazon and they could feel like, wow, I'm not alone. And like that that ultimately is like what humans are actually craving is that feeling of like, Hey, I'm actually not alone in this. There's someone else who, um, who who resonates with my story. That's really cool. When, I mean, if you want to talk ripple effect for just a second, it's like Mm -hmm. there's two aspects of that, right? There's the ripple effect of um, the people who attended 
um, your event, which over mm -hmm. 50% of how many ever people were in the room, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that then are on their way towards, um, you know, healing their relationship with food, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and but then also not to mention the people that they inspire uh, by going mm -hmm. on that journey. It's like, so in my totally. position, it's like, I didn't even know that that happens, but that's just a byproduct of like mm -hmm. all of this, right? And this is just, it just keeps going. And then there's also the ripple effect, which is like uh, what I imagine was pretty awesome for you. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also for any of your, um, your listeners who also decide to do a book is like the feeling of just holding a book in your hands. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, the first time that I held my book, it was like, okay, if I were to die tomorrow, um, this thing would still be here. You know, yeah. like it might be at a Goodwill, it yeah. might be, uh, you know, but like it will be on the earth. Whereas mm -hmm. I feel like uh, a lot of the things that we do in the digital world, it's like, eh, I mm. mean, like, cool, but, but like if I were to die or if the internet goes away or if my computer gets deleted, like it's all, yeah, mine. like there's absolutely just something about creating something where you can actually hold it in your hands much like mm. when you're able to see the impact of like in a room with people who their mm. lives are being like, I feel like is that that similar feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really cool. If you and I didn't know each other on a personal level, you would have never known that that happened. And you're right. It's like, it's not just them coming into the room and being affected by the retreat. It's like the ripple effect of like, now they're going to educate everyone on like, everyone in their circle. And that, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, it's interesting. I, I was, when I was living in London about f four years ago now, I went to this like write a book event. Um, oh gosh, I don't remember who the guy like doing it was, but I just remember it being it feeling so complicated and so like over my head. And it was, it was an event put on by a publishing company. So like, that's what they were trying to do. And I just remember the process and, and this was probably intentional them making it like purposely making it complicated. Um, so for, for the last couple of years, I just had this like story around like, Oh, I, I really want to write a book like this message of like how to help people end the fight that they have with food and their bodies needs to be out there. And I can't do that. It's so complicated. Like it's, it's so over my head. So when I, when I, when I met you this time last year and I kind of like learned about what you did, I was like, I was like, I want to do that. And going through the process, it was actually simple. Like you, you made it so simple. So I just would love for you to speak, speak on like, um, just like how we're, we're like kind of shifting from like before it was like all traditional publishing and now we're kind of sh shifting into self-publishing and, and like the process that you created to make it easy for people. Like I'd just love to talk about like how you're able to do that. Yeah. So uh, first things first, I think is the misconception that you need a publisher uh, to mm -hmm. a publish your book or to be successful publishing a book. Um, mm -hmm. And that could be further from the truth. So the, the encouraging piece for your listeners, is like uh, there's been some radical shifts in the book publishing industry um, where it's never been easier um, to write and publish a book. And then now at the same time, there's hundreds mm -hmm. of millions of buyers um, mm -hmm. who are buying more books easier, right? Like mm -hmm. if you think about what it took uh, to formally, like in the past to buy mm -hmm. a book, it was like, I got to find a Barnes and Noble. I got to go down to the store. I got to mm -hmm. oftentimes know what book I'm looking for, hope that they have it, then go mm -hmm. get it. Which now with yeah. Amazon, which over 70% of all books sold are sold on Amazon. Um, now it's just like, if I want a book, if I'm at a conference, if, I'm, if, if we're hanging out and you tell me about a book, like it's most likely purchased. Uh, but like by the time, uh, like within a, a five minutes, like, and it'll yeah. be at my house within two days. Yeah. Um, so the rate at which people can um, purchase books is so much faster. And mm -hmm. there's hundreds of millions of buyers inside Amazon. While at the same time, the middleman's been removed. Uh, mm. and you know, where it used to, you ha used to have to get a, a publisher. Um, it would take you years. You would be stripped of your creative liberties. Uh, you would uh, make pennies on the dollar and these publishers would do zero marketing for your book. Mm. Uh, and, but that was the golden ticket. Like that was the Willy Wonka golden ticket that everyone wanted for some yeah. reason. But now um, really the only reason that that survived is because there was, uh, the, the, the publishers had a stranglehold on distribution which was, uh, you know, much like in the music industry, um, the record labels have a stranglehold on distribution. Uh, right. So if you have a stranglehold on distribution, then that's kind of like, okay, well, you have to go with us to get to the bookstores. Uh, mm -hmm. But now that all the bookstores are going out of business, and Amazon's selling all of the books, there's no longer the need for that intermediary. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of the, the way the, 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 this whole thing has shifted, uh, and that creates a lot of opportunity for, for people. That answers kind of your first question. Mm -hmm. And then your second question on like, okay, how do you make something that's, uh, perceived as complicated to everyone, uh, be so simple. Uh, and, and for that, um, this is kind of part of my story, 
is, uh, you know, I'm a C-level English student and a college dropout. Um, so I always like to tell people like, if I can do it, you definitely can. <laughs> uh, because, uh, and, you know, because uh, I feel like one of my gifts is to make complicated things simple. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've never felt like I've been blessed with like extreme intellect. It's just so, so I need to be able to get something. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I know what it feels like to feel like the dumbest person in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, and there must be something I'm missing here. Like everyone around me is making A's on their English papers. Mm -hmm. it takes them an hour and I'm up all night and I get a C. Right, like, right. What is going on here? Uh, and, and so um, I know that uh, I've, I've uh, kind of seen that for myself. So that was my goal in kind of creating this process to say, hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this as simple as possible for people mm -hmm. so that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, right. and that's kind of what you, what you saw, Sam, which is just breaking it down into a really simple process mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. people can follow. And the last thing I'll mention on that is, I mean, uh, I was just on uh, Good Morning Sacramento like a couple weekends ago with Emma Sumner, who's an eight-year-old, or she's nine. That's incredible. She that's incredible. Book, uh, at eight years old, right? Yeah. Um, I just heard from my staff today mm -hmm. that uh, one of our students, I didn't even know this, um, was like dyslexic, had a learning ability, mm -hmm. a learning disability, uh, mm -hmm. and all these things like just published their book. It's like, so cool. you know, um, we just so had our cool. second blind person enroll in the program. What? Like, like, they're writing a book. You know, mm. so I mean, it really just goes to show that um, with, with the right tools, there's no excuses mm -hmm. for not doing it. And really there's mm -hmm. no excuses for not getting that message um, that you mm -hmm. have inside you out to others where it can be mm -hmm. important to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't Barnes and Noble like going out of business? Isn't? Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of dying a slow death. I mean, you yeah. walk into a Barnes and Noble and you quickly you quickly understand why because they're understaffed. Yeah. The staff isn't very helpful. Yeah. You know, it's, it, the, the, I hate, I, you know, as much as I hate it because the bookstore is like, it's a beautiful place, right? Like you can totally. get in there. Yeah. Um, it really is. Um, it's um, because they're operating on an antiquated model. And now right. what's surprising a lot of people is that Amazon started mm. opening bookstores. Yeah. I saw that. There's, isn't there one in San Diego? Maybe it's either San Diego or Sa Seattle. I can't remember. Um, right, right. But it, that's what's what's interesting is because they now know what sells. They have right. like they can test everything online, and then they can pull people into the stores mm. regardless of whether they're mm -hmm. quote unquote published by a big right. publisher or not. Right, right. Um, and something in your course that I found super interesting, I actually did this completely wrong and you called me out for it. <laughs> a lot of people are like, I just can't write. Like I'm not actually a good writer. And there's this process in your course where, where you can just talk it out. Um, I didn't do this right though. I was literally just walking down the street, just like talking to myself and I gave it to my editor. She's like, uh, you repeated yourself like a hundred times. <laughs> <But> I, did, <laughs> I didn't follow that portion. But like when, when you just like write it out bullet point, you can just go through, go through the points and like talk it out as if you're just like talking to a friend. hundred percent. So the part that you're referencing and so I've kind of like a three-step process, um, which mm -hmm. is what you followed Sam. And I'll just share this with people, which is like, uh, there's, you create a mind map. Uh, it's kind of a brain dump of everything you can think of on the topic that you're writing about. Mm -hmm. And you turn that mind map into an outline, which is the second mm -hmm. piece. It's kind of like a chapter by chapter outline. Uh, and then the third step is, is I always just say, write the dang thing, right? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. there's two ways you can go there. For some people, that means uh, fingers to keyboard. Uh, for others, that means speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. Me personally, I'm a way better speaker than I am uh, a a, a typist or how whatever the word is uh for yeah. that, uh, just but, that. <laughs> i'm like disproving the fact that i'm a good speaker right yeah. <laughs> but no so speaking comes easier for me right than mm -hmm. writing it's like when i sit down at the keyboard it's always harder for, it's like i know what i want to say but i just can't yes. say it, it mm -hmm. when i read it i'm like this is so confusing mm -hmm. and, it's, mm -hmm. and then someone else will come at like an editor which i definitely recommend will come in they'll they'll clean it up and it's like wow that's exactly what i wanted to say and you said it way better mm -hmm. than i ever could have mm -hmm. uh, so um the, getting to that third step is speaking or typing um mm -hmm. once you if you do the prep work which i know that was the part that you mentioned like you kind of skipped over a bit then you realized it and then went back and did it and then yeah. it was so much easier totally that's why people totally it hard uh, yeah it's, it's kind of like uh, in english class you know, growing up in school, my teachers always tell me, do an outline before you write your paper. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. That's a huge waste of time. Why would I ever do that? I'm just going to start writing the paper. And there's kind of no secret why my paper sucked and they all got C's and my friend's papers got A's, right? Because yeah. they were doing that pre-work. So that's really important. Uh, but then not only doing the upfront, this is where I think it makes, it just gets way easy for people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's repeating this three-step process uh, chapter by chapter throughout the book. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, this is, I think, where you went off the rails a bit with the speaking portion. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, it, 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 you take the chapter, uh, spend 10 minutes mind mapping everything that you can think of on that mm -hmm. chapter, spend 10 minutes turning that mind map into an outline, uh, mm -hmm. then you spend 45 minutes writing it, right? Mm -hmm. So a, a mm -hmm. chapter per hour, or mm -hmm. spend 15 minutes speaking it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's, there's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Um, yeah. Either way, you've got that structure on a chapter by chapter basis. Yeah. One of the most powerful things um, that I realized, and, and I, I learned this in your course, and now I'm like implementing it with other things in my life is you just, you just find a time that you just sit down and you write. And sometimes I would sit down. And so that time for me was like eight to nine o'clock, um, Monday to Friday. And sometimes I would sit down there and I'm like, I can't get anything out today. Like there would be literally nothing coming through. And then other days I couldn't stop writing. And I think creating that time and space, to just commit and just show up for yourself. That in of itself is just like a beautiful um, way of, of creating self-discipline that, that I can use in, in any area. And that's ultimately what got it done. Cause I've been like thinking about writing a book for so long. I'm like, it's something I really want to do. Oh, I'll do it next year. I'll do it next year. I'll do it next year. And um, it's so funny. This is like a metaphor for, for a lot of things. It's like, in your mind, it's so much harder than what you like, than what it actually is. And when I went through the process, like once the book like got released and it hit bestseller, I like looked back, I'm like, that was easy. Like that was simple. That was actually enjoyable. Mm. But I, in my mind, I was like, this is going to take ages. This is going to take forever. Um, a really cool thing for me as well, because my book is based on like my life story and based on like my struggle with, with food, and my body, when I came out of the film industry, it was actually, I didn't realize this, but like, I kind of just like cut off that part of me. I was like, oh, that, that's like, that's done, whatever. Like that, I'm not that person anymore. And so there, like for me, there was like a slight resistance to like actually want to write the book. Cause I'm like, I don't want to really like revisit that time, but it was, it was truly the most healing process for me. It was really cool to like, look at it like objectively and be like, wow, like that sucked. And like, I'm so much stronger on, on the other side of it. So for a lot of people listening and maybe you've gone through like super traumatic things or maybe there's like a part of your life and a part of your life story that um you want to bring out and you want to and, and you want to like bring to life and um it's a, it's a really healing process you know i think like correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like a lot of your clients or people that buy your book buy it for like business like to, to like generate like leads and things like that or is it like 50 50 what do you think yeah it's kind of um we have two big buckets there's the entrepreneur mm -hmm. crowd but what surprised me actually is is the lion's share are people who it's a bucket list item or it's a mm. legacy. Mm. Um, honestly, it's, it's all, um, it's, it's all older women. Like, mm. um, you know, that's probably like 75% of people in, in the program. Uh, and uh, you know, the, uh, if actually not even older women, just like women in general. And I would, I would mm. go probably 35 plus. Um, which before I'd fit in anyone, 35 is not, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean like, uh, you, you know, they're, they're late, they're, they're at, um, a mid to later stage in their career mm -hmm. or their career's already over. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, Hey, I learned a bunch of stuff that like, I don't want to die with this in me. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I learned it the hard way. I want to mm -hmm. pass this on to other people, totally. whether it's a memoir, whether it's a uh, self-help type book or, or, you know, whatever that thing is. Um, I feel like, um, they just really resonate with what we're doing and also mm. see the power of, of passing mm. it down. Right. I, I think oftentimes guys are like, Oh, you know, I've learned this the hard way and I'm just going to keep on working or keep on doing whatever. And, and don't stop to look at, Hey, how could I help other people? Totally. How could other yeah. people benefit, benefit from the hardships, from the struggles, mm -hmm. um, from the, you know, the things that I went and went through and learned from the hard way. Yeah. Even if you think your story is like so shameful and so traumatic and like no one would understand, there's going to be thousands of people that will understand and resonate with you. And you don't need to create a business out of it, but simply under, simply knowing that you've put work in to create something on this planet that is going to like help humanity. That's a cool thing. That is such a cool thing. Like I get messages like daily, like multiple daily being like, Sam, I read your book. Oh my gosh. No one understood me until like, um, until like I, no one understood or I didn't tell anyone until I read your book. And now I feel like I can actually get help for this thing. Or I feel like I can actually tell someone because you kind of like de-shamed the whole like food and body conversation. So super, super cool. Um, what do you feel is like people's biggest resistance to not writing books, even though it's like something that most people say they want to do? Uh, well, there's a couple of things. Um, number one is, um, people think uh, that they don't have the time. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So they think that a book, they envision a writer locking themselves in a cave for like six months and not, Mm -hmm. not breaching the outside world. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, you're living proof of that. It doesn't take that. Um, you know, mm. it, it, it's like an hour a day for you, right? Which is what I would like to, I would like to lock myself in a cave though. That would be, <laughs> that would be fun. You'd probably get done way faster, right? <laughs> but, uh, that's the biggest thing. And, and, and as a sub point of that is like, okay, there's, okay. Um, I don't have the time, but most of the time people will, will that'll manifest itself as, uh, the timing isn't right. Which, mm. you know, like you said, like for four years, you're like, oh, I want to write a book, but it's totally. not the time right now. Totally. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my message to those people, mm. it's kind of some tough love. It's like the timing will literally never uh, be right. It's like saying, mm-hmm. hey, when's, um, when's, the t- when's the best time to like have a kid? Or when's the best time to get laid off from my job? Or when's the best time to like move across the country? Like, mm-hmm. you know, quit my job, drop out of school, like, any of those things. There's never, uh, I feel like people envision that there's going to be this yellow brick road that appears where they can just like skip down to the finish line and they're going to have mm. no kids, no responsibilities, no job, mm. nothing but time mm. to lock themselves uh, in the writer's cabin and, 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 and write the book. But that just couldn't be further from the, from, from the truth. Like so that's mm-hmm. my big message to people is, Hey, look, you got to start before you're ready because you're never mm-hmm. gonna be ready. Um, mm-hmm. Dick Ziegler has a great quote um, where he says, uh, if you wait for all the lights to turn green, before starting your journey, you'll never get started on your way to the top. So like, mm. I always just kind of envision going on a family vacation, which we had like this big suburban. Uh, and we would, you know, like you got all the luggage in there, the whole family's in there. And I just imagine pulling to the end of our driveway and saying, okay, all right, kids, like we're gonna head off to this vacation destination as soon as all the lights turn green from <laughs> here to Edisto or to Florida or to, you know, to yeah. wherever we were going, right? Um, and it's just like, that's never going to happen. Uh, yeah. But people, for some reason, look at a book that way. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, I see all the light screen to, to the end point, mm-hmm. which is like me publishing this book. I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're waiting for all the lights to turn green. Like you're never going to get started. Yeah, absolutely. And if it's not for anyone else, just do it for yourself. Like, as I mentioned, it was like such a cool journey for me to just, just like get my life story on paper. And I remembered things like through the process of doing it, I remember things that I completely forgot about myself or like things that happened. And it was like Mm -hmm. a really cool time. And like the thought of like, that will get passed down to like my kids. Like that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool thing. You mentioned this earlier. It's very therapeutic Mm -hmm. as well as uh, it forces you to crystal. It forces you to crystallize. What are your thoughts on certain things? Mm. I, that was the, that was the the toughest slash also the biggest revelation for me uh, yeah. is when you write something down. You you're like I need to make a stance. Like, yeah. I've never had to actually think what I believe on this, uh, and I've never like. And it, there's just a different feeling to the written word. Uh, mm. You know, we're like I could fire up a video and say something, and it's like I'm not gonna really think that hard about like am i making a firm stance but when you have to like distill what you know into written text it it just there's a lot of internal growth that happens because you have to say hey this is what i believe Uh, this is what i think is actually the best for other people yes and the best thing about about doing it in in self-publishing um you can write whatever you want like one of my girlfriends she um she went through traditional publishing and she has a story not not super similar to mine but on the same thread of like personal development and um her publisher made her change so much stuff that the like the story did not was not even indicative of her life story at all to the point where like for me i'd be like nah i'm good like i'm i'm actually not even gonna put that out into the world because it is so out of alignment and so out of integrity with what actually happened and so um with 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 my book i could literally write whatever whatever i wanted i I could write like the absolute truth without holding anything back and like no one was telling me i couldn't do that except for my mom she she like made me take out like 14 swear words but other than that (laughs) other than that she really did she like texted me she's like "Mm." doesn't doesn't sound good so I, I, had, I had to take out a few f-bombs but i'm trying to clean up my language anyway so that was probably like for the greater good of everyone um but yeah it was great that i had just like full creative control to to write whatever i wanted mm-hmm. and write like my entire life story without being like filtered through the eyes of a publisher which was really cool that's awesome yeah yeah really 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 cool um so you you are on number six, six best-selling books. Mm-hmm. And are you, what, what's your plan? Are you just going to keep writing them and keep, keep 
getting bestseller? Uh, not for a while. Uh, mm. You know, a book's a, a book's a labor mm. of love, and mm. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so for me personally, like I did six books, and gosh, I mm. want to say it was like three years or something, yeah. which is just is too much. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, a book was my get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. uh, so my kind of my story is, I you know published my very first book, um, and I was snowboarding in Austria right before I was about to drop out of school. Um, and I was talking to a friend, he said, hey, is it, books don't make any money though. Like, is this book actually making any money? I said, oh, wow, yeah, actually we were snowboarding all day yesterday. The book made 400 bucks. No right? way. And I realized like, hey, this is passive income. This is that mm -hmm. mystical thing um, mm -hmm. that Robert Kiyosaki talks about, in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? That <laughs> yeah. I thought was only possible through real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and then that book went on to make close to seven thousand dollars in the first month, wow. and then like a few wow. thousand dollars the next month, a few thousand dollars the next month. Mm -hmm. like, and it continued to make thousands of dollars a month in passive income, which mm -hmm. for me kept my head above water. To um, once I dropped out of school, mm -hmm. and like fast forward a few months later, I put all the chips back in the center of the table. All my bank accounts are negative, um, and I borrowed fifteen thousand dollars from friends and family. What I do, launch another book, right? Um, that book brought in like close to $100,000 within 55 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it grew my business to $1.32 million in 11 months. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few months ahead, show up to a, a company retreat for my company, uh, find out my business partner was trying to kick me out of my business. Uh, and then the next thing I know, um, I, I'm negotiating a buyout. I buy them out uh, and I go multiple six figures in debt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, so what I do launch another book. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. that book, um, I, like I pay off this debt in less than 11 months. Like wow. um, I pay off this debt a few months later. Mm. I, um, the business brought in over $1.5 million in like the next seven months after wow. um, doing that book. And mm -hmm. so yeah, I truly mean it when I say like a book is my get out of jail free card. Uh, yeah. But now I'm like, the business is good. We're growing. Um, the next book I think I'll write won't be for a while. It's going to be more like a probably gonna be a business book or something that's not in the publishing realm more yeah. like hey here's what I've learned from growing um this massive company and like something that'll help other people mm -hmm. yeah so it's not gonna be for a while though yeah that's cool I like that um you have some strong opinions on the New York Times bestselling list and why that's like kind of fundamentally flawed I'd love for you just to share because a lot of people don't know that so I'd love for you just to share a little bit on that yeah it's a scam uh, the, the, the New York Times is uh, just an, it's very antiquated. What most people don't know is that it's an editorial list, mm. uh, meaning that mm. um, it's not a true bestseller list. Uh, so if you want a true bestseller list based on book sales, like number of units sold, which would you think bestseller list, uh, you think like, okay, t total number of units sold in the last week, right? right? Well, if you want that list, that's actually the USA Today. Right. Um, now, if you want like number of hard copies sold, uh, you know, more traditional style. That's actually the Wall Street Journal, mm. um, both of which are more reputable than the, the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, the New York Times is an editorial list. So it's right. somewhat based on how much that you sold, uh, mm -hmm. but it's also based on like, did you have any bulk mm -hmm. book sales? Did you sell at mom and pop bookstores as well right. as Amazon bookstores, as well as, you know, uh, did you have a nice spread? Were those also spread across zip codes across the country in every state and county? Um, mm. what did that look like? Is that mm. spread across the, um, the country? Yeah. Did, like I said, did you have two to $3,000 or sorry, two to 3000 books sold in bulk? So like the corporations, mm. like you have to check all these boxes, right? Even when you check all those boxes, uh, the New York times can say, Hey, um, an editor, I'm an editor at the New York times. Let's pretend for a second. Right. Uh, and I can just say, Hey, um, I don't like you. Uh, my girlfriend just dumped me. It's raining outside. Mm -hmm. I'm in a bad mood today. What, you know, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, just yeah. off the list. Right. Um, so there have been uh, book launches um, that have, have sold tons of books, like Michael Hyatt, mm -hmm. Russell Brunson. Um, mm -hmm. I think Brenda Burchard as well. Like huge launches. I mean, Michael Hyatt was the CEO of a traditional publisher, uh, Thomas Nelson, for 30 years. And wow. they came off the list just because... Um, He's an mm. internet marketer, right? Mm. He sold more than enough books to be on the list, but they just mm -hmm. chose to keep him off. Mm. Um, they tried to do something similar to Jeff Walker. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he reloaded and sold a bunch more books. Right. And then yeah. you know, they were like, all right, we can't keep this guy off and, and, and maintain our reputation. So it's, it's just kind of, uh, it's a vanity metric, mm -hmm. uh, something that people want to shoot for, but 
I, 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 it, it's a total scam. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and it's, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If, that, if that's what you're doing it for, <laughs> mm-hmm. like re-examining your priorities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just helping a lot of people. Uh, and the yeah. decisions that you make to try and hit the New York Times are often kind of like uh, inversely correlated to like, mm-hmm. how can I just help as many people as possible with this book? Yeah, for sure. And it really comes back to like identifying why you're doing it. Like we, we get so caught up in like, I'm just going to do it just to do it. Or I'm just going to like chase the shiny ball just because like everyone's chasing the shiny ball. But what's mm-hmm. really important to remember with anything that we do that actually matters, it's like, what is the why behind doing this? Because it's not about, it's not about us. Like you're not going to write that book for you. It's going to be cool for you, but it's really about like, how, like, why is this important for the world? Like, why does this actually make sense? And I think when we can connect to like that greater good, the motivate, the motivation from that standpoint is so much greater than just like doing it for ourselves or doing it to like get some sort of like accolades or awards or anything like that. So that's cool. Completely agree. Yeah. So I don't, I don't recommend anything that I don't actually go through myself and like fully believe in. Um, those people who know me really <laughs> know this. Um, and I, I like, I love what you're up to Chandler. I think I know you're helping a lot of people. You've helped me firsthand get to bestseller. And like, because of that ripple effect help so many other people. Um, so can you kind of like share a little bit about the program? Um, oh, one thing I'll mention about it that I loved, like one of the, one of the most important things for me was like the accountability. What do you call it? Like accountability buddy or something? Yeah. The yeah. Account- we call it the accountability buddy. About like, I can't even say that. I yeah. like, yeah, like, <laughs> I like trip over my tongue. Um, but that was really powerful because you could like go through the process with someone else, which was really interesting. Um, so yeah, if you could just like go ahead and like share a little bit about self-publishing school, the course. Cool. Yeah. So um, self-publishing school, it's an online training program. We te- teach people how to write, market, and publish their first book in 90 days. Um, so that, that, that is the goal, right? Um, so if there's a, there's a couple things that we're really good at is people's books getting done. Um, mm-hmm. them successfully launching them. Like those are the mm-hmm. two things, like we're very good at marketing. Uh, like I said, I'm very good at simplifying the process and making it mm-hmm. easy um, mm-hmm. so that uh, fellow C level English students with ADD can also, uh, you know, people like me can like follow the, pro- the, the program. Um, Eight year olds can follow the program. People who are dyslexic mm-hmm. can follow the pro- pro- program. People who are blind can follow the program, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like really making it, uh, really making it uh, simple. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it, there's a lot of online training, there's checklists, there's templates, there's tutorials, mm-hmm. like everything you can need to go through the process, as mm-hmm. well as a ton of accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm of the belief that people don't need more online courses. Um, mm-hmm. They need to like get a result, right? They want a result and they feel like the online course it can get there, can get them there, but then oftentimes they buy it and they don't do anything with it. Sure. Um, so we've set ours up kind of in a way where it's just very different and mm-hmm. um, we're going to hold your feet to the fire and make sure that you get it done. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and because we know, like, uh, I always like in writing a book, it's like uh, having this key that opens the door to Narnia. Like, there's this whole <laughs> door out there that you didn't know existed, That's awesome. right? And I know mm-hmm. that people can only see Narnia when they have the key. Uh, yes. And for them to get the key, they need to go through the program uh, and finish their book. And so, mm-hmm. like, that's what really lights me up is like, hey, we help people actually finish their book mm-hmm. uh, and, and then use that as a jumping off point. Whether it's yeah. personally, uh, you know, we have people in the program who are like, hey, um, you know, I just got a message from a friend who was struggling with suicide, was on an antidepressant. She's off her meds and she credits my book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's about that sort of thing, right? Or like mm-hmm. one of the gals, um, in the program just the other week was like, Hey, I can't, I know I've said this a ton of times, but, uh, like, I can't thank you guys enough for this program. Um, my dad just passed away and it was his dying wish for, for him to see me become a bestselling author. Uh, and he did, and like he did. Mm. And then also, um, like, Oh, by the way, um, I, you know, I've got this yoga business going based off of some of the stuff in my book, uh, and it generated an extra $30,000 this month. And it's just, wow. wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, so yeah. those are the things that really light me up. And that's what the program is, is meant to help. Mm, that's so cool. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, Chandler, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, for those of you who saw my process, a lot of you did, um, it was fun. It was great. It's so doable. It's so doable. So Chandler, thank you for simplifying it because I know this is like a, something that a lot of people have in them and and want to want to bring out into the world. So so thanks for what you do. Super rad. No problem. No All problem. righty. We'll see you soon. See ya. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode on the Hungry for Happiness podcast. You can join the conversation with women just like yourself at hungryonfacebook.com. Until next week, ladies, stay classy and bad at